In this video, we are going to start with our new unit that is variance in Turing machine. Uh, in the earlier chapter, we have seen what is Turing machine. Uh, we have seen five tuple of Turing machine, and we have also discussed how uh, Turing machine can be used to solve problems of various type of languages that like regular language or context-free language. And further, we also discussed how we can use Turing machine to solve different functions like uh, modular functions, functions like copying, deleting of string, right? So we, we have understood that Turing machine are generic machines which have a broader range of solving the problems. In this unit, we are going to discuss about different variants in Turing machine. Variants in the sense, uh, different types of special Turing machines or different types of Turing machine we can say rather. First such type of Turing machine that we are going to study in this particular video is universal Turing machine is universal Turing machine okay so uh, it is in the name itself universal Turing machine the concept would be a Turing machine which is more generic in nature right so what this Turing machine tries to do is tu this Turing machine uh, is basically taking input as uh, a program which will process uh, the input string and this input string will give you another Turing machine right uh, whenever we construct any type of Turing machine, uh, that Turing machine can accept a particular language. Say for example, if I draw a Turing machine for palindrome, so it can only solve the strings related to palindrome, <coughs> correct? If I construct Turing machine related to say ending with ABA, then it will be able to solve only uh, problem related to ending with ABA. I cannot use a Turing machine of ending with ABA to solve Turing machine of uh, language of palindrome, right? So if we could have a universal Turing machine, which universal Turing machine can be able to solve any type of problem. So how it is going to happen? Basically, this universal Turing machine, the input to this universal Turing machine itself will be some mechanism which will generate a Turing machine out of it. Say if I say TU is my Turing machine, this TU Turing machine will take input as some string this string will produce a Turing machine T1 as output and this T1 will be catering to a particular problem say for that matter. So based if my if I change my input I will get different types of Turing machine as an output from TU. So the working of TU will remain same. Working of TU will remain same. If I give an in, a particular input it gives me T1 as output. If I give particular input it gives me T2 as output. If I give particular input it gives me T3 as output. Right? So these are independent machines. So I can consider T1 is a Turing machine of palindrome. T2 is a Turing machine of ending with ABA. T3 is a Turing machine of copying string. Right? So I can get different Turing machines as output for different inputs. But working of TU remains same. And that's why we can say TU is a universal Turing machine. Right? Now how it is going to happen? So to make a universal Turing machine, first we should understand what are different components of Turing machine. And if this components of Turing machine can be made generic in nature, then entire Turing machine can also be made as universal. Right? So what are different components of Turing machine? So we have the symbols, right, in the form of tape symbols, or we have blank symbol also, right? Then we have uh, states, Q0, Q1, Q2, and so on. We have accepting state HA, we have uh, rejecting state HR and then we have moves of our tape head that is uh, shifting to left shifting to right or remaining stationary right so whenever we write any delta in a Turing machine right if, if I write any delta for that matter delta of Q comma A is equal to delta of P comma B comma S for example so what all things are involved in that particular transition state tape symbol, state, tape symbol, stationary, left, right, right. So if, if we could generalize these components, then we will be able to create universal Turing machine. So how we will generalize this? This generalization can be done with help of an encoding function. How we are going to generalize this? This we are going to generalize with help of an encoding function. We call that en encoding function as encoding function E. Now let us see what is that encoding function. Okay, so encoding function for blank is a single zero. Encoding function for a blank is a single zero. Encoding function for all other tape symbols is starting from two zero onwards for all the tape symbol which are there in your uh, Turing machine. 
which are there in your Turing machine. Now, what do you mean by this? Suppose my particular Turing machine is having two tape symbols A and B. So A will be treated as two zeros and B will be treated as three zeros. Blank will be treated as single zero. A will be treated as two zeros. B will be treated as three zeros. So whatever tape symbols you have, for each one of them, we will be having some number of count of number of zeros. Blank will have zero. Then first tape symbol will have two zeros. Second tape symbol will have three zeros, and so on and so forth. Similarly, for states, H A will have single zero. H R will have two zeros, and all the remaining states will be having from three zero onwards. For each of these states. Are you getting this right? So H A will have single zero, H R will have two zeros. Then if I have first state as say Q one, so this Q one will have three zeros. Then Q two will have four zeros. Are you getting this? Likewise, whatever number of states I have, I'll have those many number of zeros for that particular states. Then I have stationary single zero, left move two zeros, and right move. As three zeros. So this is how we are encoding all the components involved in a particular move of a Turing machine. Okay. So suppose, suppose we have a move M of a Turing machine, which is described as follows. Suppose I have a delta example. P comma A is Q comma B comma D. Okay. So P and Q are our states. A and B are our tape symbol, and D is representing a tape head, whether it can be S, L, or R. So, how I can write encoding for this particular move? This is encoded by a string as encoding of this move M. Encoding of this move M is given as encoding of P. Whatever encoding we have given for state P, followed by One as a separator, then encoding of A that is tape symbol, followed by encoding of Q separator as one, followed by encoding of B one as separator, and encoding of D and followed by separator. So this is how we are going to represent encoding of a move M in a Turing machine. First we will have the encoding for P. One as separator, encoding of A. One as separator, encoding of Q. One as separator, encoding of B. One as separator, and encoding of D. One as separator. Now we will have such many moves. So move number two will be below that, then move number three, and so on. Correct. Now suppose we have entire Turing machine now. So for any Turing machine T with initial state as Q. How I am going to write encoding of the Turing machine? So how we write Turing machine's encoding? It is written as first we write encoding of initial state. So suppose my initial state of my uh, Turing machine is Q. So first I'll write encoding of initial state followed by separator one. Then I'll write encoding of move one. So I'll have suppose five moves. So first I'll write encoding of initial state. Then separator one, then encoding of first move. Are you getting this? Then encoding of second move, then encoding of third move, and so on, up to encoding of kth move. Suppose I have k moves. Suppose I have k moves where m one, m two, and up to m k are distinct moves in my Turing machine. So this is how we describe a universal Turing machine. This is how we have described a universal Turing machine. Now let us see an example, which, with help of that example, we'll construct a Turing universal Turing machine for that one. Okay. Now suppose I draw one Turing machine here for you. Suppose this is one of the Turing machines for one of the languages.
suppose we have three states q p r and we have h a and then we have these type of transaction transitions present okay we have taken some random example over here so first we should write encoding for our blank which is zero what are our tape symbol in this example we can see tape symbols are small a and small b right so encoding of small a will be two zeros encoding of small b will be three zeros and blank do we have any other tape symbol no then encoding of ha will be single zero encoding of hr is two zeros even if we don't have hr but it is a standard encoding that's why we consider as hr as two zeros then encoding of q is three zero encoding of p will be four zeros encoding of r will be five zeros which are our three states ha already we have given right then encoding of stationary is zero encoding of left is two zeros and encoding of right is three zeros now what are different moves involved in this particular turing machine what is our first move of this turing machine okay what is first move of this turing machine delta of q comma blank is p comma blank comma r this is our first move right delta of q comma blank is p comma blank comma r this is our first move so how i'm going to write this first move in the form of encoding first i'll write encoding of q what is encoding of q yes what is encoding of q it is three zeros followed by one then encoding of blank what it is single zero then one then encoding of p what it is four zeros then encoding of blank one zero then encoding of r that is three zeros then one separator then i'll have second move what is my second move delta of p comma b is p comma b comma r how i will write that what is encoding of p four zeros correct what is encoding of b three zeros then what is encoding of p again it is four zeros then what is encoding of b three zeros what is encoding of r three zeros so this is how we have completed two moves correct likewise here i'll have third move what is my third move delta of p comma a is r comma b comma left then i'll have fourth move this is fourth move then this will be fifth move and this will be sixth move so third fourth fifth sixth so for third there will be encoding then for fourth there will be encoding then for fifth there will be encoding then for sixth there will be an encoding which will continue after this right so this will be encoding of all the moves this will be encoding of all the moves then what will be encoding of our entire turing machine first for turing machine we first have encoding of initial state what is initial state in our example q what is encoding of q it is 0 0 0 so first i'll have initial state 0 0 0 followed by one followed by all the moves so whatever answer you write here in the form of moves that entire thing will be coming here which will be universal turing machine tm for this particular problem so all students are advised to complete the moves for the other in your encodings for other moves also as a part of homework so they can complete this for the other moves so this is how this string now this string will be given as an input to a universal turing machine this entire so from that what universal turing machine comes to know this is first which is initial state then first move so for the first move this is starting state this is tape symbol or a blank symbol this is the resultant state this is tape symbol or a blank symbol this is tape head move then this is second move so this is how universal turing machine has a common logic to work so when it executes this from this it generates a another turing machine which is this turing machine so for that matter any type of input you give here from that a new turing machine is going to get generated and that's why this this particular machine which runs on zeros and ones is called as a universal turing machine which is the first variant of 
our chapter that is variance in Turing machine. In this particular chapter, we will have different type of short notes only for universal for variance in Turing machine. Today we have discussed uh, va first variant that is universal Turing machine. Likewise, we have more variants in the form of non-deterministic Turing machine or Turing machine with doubly infinite tape. So, which we are going to see in the subsequent lectures. All these questions for chapter number 6 will be in the form of short notes. We don't have numericals much as such in this particular unit. So, it is advised to students that please go through uh, this particular topic from the textbook in the form of ebook which is given to you and complete this particular uh, problem for rest of the moves. Thank you.